A randori is another kind of collaborative game that you can play in your coding dojo. The name comes from karate. It's a kind of free-form interaction or sparring. The analogy with karate is not perfect, but in a coding dojo, the general idea is that everyone should be contributing some code, and nobody has particularly prepared something in advance. As with a prepared kata, the code is projected onto a screen where everyone can see it, and everyone takes a turn at writing some code. You'll probably spend 60 to 90 minutes on a randori. Longer than that, it gets harder to concentrate. So you take it in turns at the keyboard to write some code, and there are a couple of different ways that you can use to switch who has the keyboard. I think the best ones are using a time limit or ping pong. With a time limit, you just set a timer for each person, five or seven minutes, and that's how long you get at the keyboard. When the timer pings, the next person steps up and takes it from you. Ping pong is slightly different. It's where you use your TDD state to decide when it's time to swap. Now you can do ping pong programming just when you're pairing, maybe in your normal work. And the way it works is like this. Each person in the pair is like a player. So the first player will write a failing test and then you push the keyboard over to the other player and they have to make the test pass. The next step is for them to write a new failing test, pass the keyboard back for the first player to make the test pass. So it's like a game of ping pong. You're swapping the keyboard, each making a move and passing it back for the other player to make a different move. Of course, I haven't mentioned refactoring here, but you have an opportunity to refactor every time the tests pass, and usually you can collaborate on that. Ping pong programming in a randori is fairly similar, except you have more than two players. Here I'm just showing three players, but you could have a whole room full. I think it works fine up to about ten people. Beyond that, it starts to get too infrequent that each person gets the keyboard. So, to do a ping pong randori, you start with two players sitting with the keyboard, and the third player and the other players are sitting in the audience. So the first player will write a failing test, and when they've run it and can see that it fails, they pass the keyboard to the second player, who has to make it pass. At this point, the first player will sit down in the audience and a new player will step up. And it's for that person that the second player writes the next failing test. So when that's failing, they can pass the keyboard along to the other player, who's going to make it pass. Once the test is passing, the person who wrote the test sits down and a new player will set a step up. And again, you write a failing test. Whenever you get the keyboard, the first thing you do is make a test pass, and then the next thing you do is write a failing test for the next player. And the pattern just continues until everyone has had a turn, and then you go back to the first player. Again, I haven't mentioned refactoring on this diagram, but every time the tests pass, you have an opportunity to do that. And usually, the person who does the refactoring is the person who made the test pass. When you're playing this game, you'll probably find that people have a lot to say to each other. It's quite fun to write a failing test and then hand over the keyboard and see whether someone else can make it pass. There can be a lot of discussion going on, and I like to set up some rules in advance for how that discussion can be the most helpful. I like to tell people, if you have the keyboard, you decide what to type. It's your decision. Everyone else might have opinions, but it's your opinion that counts. Of course, you might not know what to type. You might have got a bit confused or not be following what's going on, and you need some help. And everyone in the room should be able to help you. So if someone asks you for help, respond kindly. Give them the help they're asking for but don't swamp them with conflicting advice. If you're sitting there and nobody's asked you for help, but you can see an opportunity to improve the code that's being written, it's your responsibility to choose a wise moment to speak, not just blurt it out straight away. It's not usually a wise moment to speak when somebody's in the middle of trying to make some tests pass. The best opportunity for refactoring and improving the design is when all the tests are passing. So try and save your comments until then.
you might also find that that's not even the wise moment to speak. It might be best to just save your comments until the retrospective after the randori is over. And this is where a good facilitator will help you to judge when a wise moment to speak is.